from the beginning to the end, it is like a rocket ship taking off and you're kind of taken around in this whole world of emotion. You just sit there and go like, this is so cool. Look how amazing this looks. You can tell that there was a wealth of love that went into making this film. So I hope people can take just a little bit of that love out with them. We're about to go behind the animation of Nimona. So Nimona is this shape-shifting punk teen girl. She's very enthusiastic about everything, especially murder and fire, and she's also incredibly powerful. Metal. So it's about a kind of unlikely friendship between two outcasts, really, two people who are really misunderstood by society at large and also who kind of misunderstand each other when they first meet. Wait, are you saying that you're not a villain? Yes! Look, I can get us out of here, but things are about to get weird. About to get weird? Promise me you won't freak out. One of the first scenes to be animated was the breakout scene, and it's the first time you see Nimona's shape-shifting in action. This is the part where you run. It's a really big moment for Nimona when she first shapeshifts because she's showing him who she actually is, and she's bearing her soul in a lot of ways. She's begging him basically not to lose sight of the Nimona that he knows. Nimona looks like a 15-year-old girl, but she's actually just a being that we're not sure what shape she originates in. When it came to the shapeshifting, we really put it to the animator to say, make this feel believable if you didn't get the benefit of any effects work on top. You know, as an animation director, you're like, oh my God, you know, it's super exciting because you're starting to picture what animals, how do we transform from one to the other shape-wise. Animation was able to, in most of these transformations, really kind of match up one character that transforms into another and do it so well that even without the effects on top, it almost just worked as it was. The motion graphics department actually kind of defined like these little, you'll notice they're little, almost like kaleidoscope little particles in there. It's a magical transformation as much as it is an emotional one. How do you meet the challenge of making it very wolf-like, gorilla-like, bear-like, and yet keep the core of who she is. You keep her behaviors, her eye shapes, her gestures very similar, but adding in little bits of who she is in the animal because she's having fun too. Something, 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 we win. I've lost everything. The man I love, my best friend. Ambrosia's Golden Loin changed the most, I think, from all of the main characters between the graphic novel to this film adaptation. Because it was the last character design, we could really tailor it to the casting in a way you know, that was, was super specific. When they decided that he would be of Asian descent, the lead animators who were designing him were pulling references of notable queer Asian American men. And so that was actually how my name got put into the ring, was because the animator was using my photos to model parts of the character off of, which is just such a humbling and wild story. They're gonna love you. Like I do. He's so smart, he's so funny. He knows how to say things and find the heart of moments that feel more real. And sometimes it was throwing away the lines that we had written just to have him play. Hey, pinky face, look at me. <laughs> look deep into my eyes. Don't fall in love. Your sidekick has arrived. I don't need a sidekick. Every villain needs a sidekick. Nimona is one of my favorite characters that I've had the opportunity to play, to be honest, and I'm not just saying that. Every time I got into the booth to record her, it was like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube of emotions with pretty much every sentence. She has these high highs and these low lows, and no matter what she does, she's unabashedly herself. Because once everyone sees you as a villain, that's what you are. They only see you one way, no matter how hard you try. Chloe Grace Moretz kills it in this role. She's able to play the mischievous side of Nimona with the more vulnerable side. You kind of need someone at the caliber of Chloe to be able to deliver that role believably. But we're still gonna break stuff. For the record, that, that is nothing like me. Riz Ahmed has the perfect voice for Ballister. It was so perfect that I'm pretty sure that all of my memories of the character from the comic were just replaced with Riz Ahmed after that point. I truly loved the way that he brought so much empathy and so much heart and so much humor to Ballister. Oh look, it's me on a rhinoceros curing several gods like a human kebab. I think Riz Ahmed is one of the most like tender actors out there and he just has so much dimension to his characters 
And to hear him in a voiceover role is really cool because you can still feel his spirit so much in Val and it really comes across so vulnerable. One decision that was important to me was to try and play the role in something close to my own accent. I felt when this story is all about someone who wants to be accepted and is afraid of not fitting in, it would be almost hypocritical of me to try and cover up my accent. I thought it would be good if he kind of stands out in that way. I'm not brooding, I'm just, I'm thinking. This is my thinking face. Hey, thinky face, look at me. The idea that I could be able to inform this character in a lot of ways with my own experience, it's a really wonderful process. We actually had so many conversations, myself, Troy, Nick, about queer experience, my experience growing up as a young man in the American South, how that relates to a lot of the struggles that these protagonists also go through with their identities about feeling somewhere in between. And I hope that you feel his struggle based on me imparting a lot of what I have been through into the storyline that he's experiencing. It's time to rewrite this story. Nimona! Nimona! I think fans of the graphic novel will really like the film because it still holds all the core values of the story. And exactly who Nimona is in the graphic novel, I think, is imparted into the movie. So Nimona started as an idea that I had when I was in high school, actually. And it was the idea of this shapeshifter who could be literally anything. That was a big power fantasy for me at the time because it was just something that I really wanted the ability to control my body and my presentation. She became a way for me to like voice those complicated, often really messy feelings in a way that I just didn't have any other way to do at that time. It was really great to see that they were willing to re-examine certain parts of the story and figure out how to bring it into the future. Their use of lighting and color is really, really like gorgeous and unique and I've never seen anything like it. You basically have this really wonderfully wild adventure and a very heartfelt story about people really discovering not only the truth of what happened in the narrative, but the truths of their own identities. One of the central themes of this film is about acceptance. I think that as important as it is to try and find that acceptance from other people, you'll never get it until you really accept and love yourself. Sometimes you need just one person to really extend you that hug before you can give it to yourself. This is a story for anyone that's ever felt other than, anyone that's ever felt ostracized or villainized for how they present themselves or who they want to be. By the end of it, I just felt really seen. Oh, I love us. Make sure to check out Nimona only on Netflix.